And welcome back to more coverage of the mayoral debate. We go on filter tonight with two members of Indiana's best political team about their takeaways from tonight's debate. I have to say, honestly, the energy level for both of our candidates who want to run for the city mayor, I, I was hoping for a little bit more. I know Mayor Joe often has a few mic drop moments, but I understand it was a debate, so maybe they had to kind of keep it cool. But as far as substance was concerned, I loved that Joe talked about his track record and the things that he had accomplished in the midst of a pandemic. A lot of things he was not able to complete because we were shut down for two years. What I took from Shree was like, he didn't have any really new ideas. He just wanted to expand on what Joe Hawks said was already doing and that was successful. Maybe make it bigger or make it make her spend more money. But I, I didn't really hear anything fresh from uh, Jefferson Shreve. So it sounded like to me, uh, Joe Hawksett is on the right track and even Jefferson Shreve believes he's on the right track because he wants to continue much of what Joe is doing. Tom, your, your takeaway from tonight's debate? Well, I think it's funny to hear it led with substance because, in fact, what I've heard from Joe Hogsett is promises. And what we heard tonight was a litany of things, whether we're talking about law enforcement or animal control of things that he's talked about and never accomplished. Jefferson Shreve is a man who has a record of accomplishment, both in business and on the council and in the community. And he's somebody who's standing up and saying, I have nothing to do but just save our city and move it forward. And that's what he is willing to do is not just make promises, but actually deliver results. To, to be fair, though, Tom, I mean, Mayor Hogg has been in office for quite some time, so we do know his track record on public safety. So from that perspective, how, how do you think he did? Well, I think it's ironic. He blames his problems in public safety on the permitless carry law, but it was only passed a year ago. Yet his administration has seen record crime throughout its eight years. So what was the mis the excuse for the seven years prior to the permitless carry being passed? The fact is he's always got somebody else to blame or in the case of proposing new United States attorneys to be hired by the federal government to help our crime problems. It's always somebody else's problem to fix. It's always something that he'll promise to do later. But just like his administration's record, this debate was full of promises and no results. Dana, I'll let you respond to that specifically when it comes to the public safety aspect of this. Sure. So I, I find it interesting that everyone wants to talk about per crime prevention, but I haven't seen anybody anywhere be able to stop a criminal from doing whatever it is a criminal wants to do. Yeah. We're not the minority report. We can't go lock somebody up before they actually commit the crime. But what Joe Hawk said did talk about were the mitigating causes that that lead to incre increased crime levels, like more job opportunities, some housing, things of that nature. Everybody wants to throw more police officers at the problem without actually looking at the root problem of why people are committing crimes to begin with. Nobody's going to stop a criminal from being a criminal. The only thing we can do is, is catch them uh, and prosecute them. Of course, they're innocent until proven guilty. But you, you can't, this is not the minority report. You can't stop people from doing crime. You can have all the police officers in the world on every corner and somebody still going to find a way to do whatever devilment they want to do. Yeah, it's definitely a, an issue not only affecting Indianapolis, but a lot of cities across the nation. Hey, I have about a, a minute left. So on that, though, go go minute. ahead, but this is, your, this is your last one. I only have 30 seconds on um, with both of you. So go ahead, Tom. Uh, that's fine. I'd like to comment on that, which is Jefferson Shreve talked about the fact that BNS has been ineffective. It used to be called code enforcement. Then we changed the, the look of it. We changed the name of it, but it's not been effective. Attorney General Todd Rakita had to come in and actually sue a landlord on the east side to try and help the residents in that because the administration had not been getting things done. This is an administration that hasn't been getting it done. And when you don't take care of the community, you don't prosecute so-called minor crimes, property crimes, that leads to greater crimes. And that's been a the large part of The mayor doesn't control problem. the prosecutor's office, and you know that. All right, Dana, close us out here. 30 seconds. Go I was, Go was going to say the mayor does not control the prosecutor's office, and he knows that. But I'm going to say this. Jefferson Shreve's best line of the night was about the animal control shelter. He had the best answer. In fact, he had a better answer on what we do with animals than he did for black and brown mortality rates, food deserts, um, renters getting kicked out. Honestly, I'm going to be real honest. Jefferson, as a black person in Indianapolis, Jefferson Shreve did nothing to convince me that he actually was hearing what was happening in our communities. He had a better answer 
for what we do with dogs and cats than he did for the life expectancy of brown, brown and black people. I think that is telling. If And we make up, black people make up over 30% of the population here in the city of Indianapolis and to not address the needs of black and brown people is crazy. At least Joe Hogg said, talked about why there were riots. He talked about what we need to do to improve the life quality of black and brown people. Jefferson Shreve needs to learn to go in and visit with some black folks and some brown folks and sit down and really have those real conversations so that he is more comfortable talking about black people issues. Good conversation here. Uh, the debate was, uh, I thought, a, a really good conversation as well. Of course, we have that at wishtv.com. Dana Black, Tom John, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us.